What inspires you? We'll tackle that question today on another mashup from Season 2 on the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. This is the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 293. You can catch all those show notes over at WBNL Podcast. Dot com. Today, we're going to dive back into another mashup from season two. This is question number four. What inspires you? You know, it's so interesting. Uh, uh, life is short. Uh, life is precious. And I think that if we really try and focus on not taking things for granted, you can literally find inspiration in just about anything. For me, I am a huge nature fan. I love uh, to get out. You know, it just recharges me, it refreshes me, but it also very much inspires me um, uh, in my life. So nature is huge for me. Obviously, family and friends, I take that, uh, you know, you know, hold that so, so dearly. And of course, people you come through, come you know, come across in your life, whether uh, they are uh, people in, uh, that you work with, uh, other acquaintances that come come through uh, your your uh, your world, uh, really can be inspirational. What works for me, though, I'm going to tell you, and this is something you should always think about too: active listening and making sure you're hearing what people are saying. That's how you can pick up a little more inspiration. So enough about me. Let's jump on in and see what the gang has to say. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty big into Seth Godin recently, so I've been kind of consuming all his stuff. Um, you know, I need to get back into some of the reading his books, but um, I don't know if you had this, but one of my favorite books of all time is The Talent Code. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of the author, but basically it's he goes through all these like hotbeds of talent, like um, the the Russian gymnastic team or the North Korean or the South Korean uh, women's um, tennis team or the other, the Renaissance painters in, in Italy. And like, he goes through these different things and talks about like, how are these groups created of these crazy hotbeds of talent? And so then he, um, you know, has this, this great uh, diving into, um, you know, kind of the group dynamics, but also like how the brain works and, and elasticity and like, as you practice certain things, like if you're hitting a baseball, as you get better and work on it, like the the myelination where your pathways in the neurons start to grow, so it's faster and easier and, and better mm. for you. So your body in in the big the big aha was that our bodies are not just okay. I'm born this way. This is how I am, and this is the level of success I can get because that's just how I was born. To okay, oh my goodness, if I practice, if I you know improve, if I have um, perfect practices he talks about, then I can improve this skill and I can have control over my mind and the success in my body um, that I want to with enough practice and dedication. And it was just like a, such a simple like aha, but that was one of the, the, the best ahas I had um, early on in my kind of career uh, trying to figure out life and everything. So I, I, I definitely love that book and, and definitely recommend it. The talent it. code. Okay. I wrote that down. It's something new today. Again, thank you, Paul. Yeah, yeah it's a little different. <laughs> you know, I, when I started uh, in the business way back, I, you know, read some books to just fine tune, you know, selling tactics and things like that. And and coming from pharmaceuticals, you know, they they took us and sequestered us for two months. Literally, they take you to Indianapolis and sequester you for two months and 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 brainwash you and teach you how to sell. But what what you learn from some of that is you learn a little bit about yourself, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so early on, though, I read some books and uh, there was one, uh, the Patterson Principles of Selling, and it was uh, revised and updated by a guy named Jeffrey Gittimer. And he he would take these little, you know, like a little snip, like a little, you know, I call them repeats. It's something that you can say and you can get inspired or you have a way that you overcome uh, an objection. And so I found that I was able to to use some of those to kind of, kind of get a mental reset. So, you know, like, you know, people don't like to be sold, but they want to buy and they're going to buy from people that they like and that they have a relationship with. So if I find myself, you know, you know, in a, in a funk or you're in a bad minute, you know, you can kind of lean on some of those. 
a, a person that's been very influential in my life and she's passed now but my grandmother i lived with my my mom and my grandmother as a, as a young person and both of them were very strong survivors just you know great ladies my grandmother in particular she would just drill into my head all the time constantly you know you can do anything you want if you just put your mind to it and you know i like to call it a form of brainwashing but it really gives me the mental fortitude to 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 be inspired every day so i could have a really rotten day and i'm up the next morning like you know woohoo the sun is out and i can get after it because i can do anything i put my mind to and it just sort of allows me to get a refresh whenever i need it by just hanging on to that and um you know for some people they could read books and you know you can do coaching and it's really whatever works for you but the whole point is to find a way for you to have control over what you think about because that's how you're going to execute your day is what's in your head all day long so i kind of hang on to those in, to those things and that really helps me to stay motivated uh, and inspired and i'm a competitive person too so that yeah. doesn't that doesn't hurt either uh i'm a big book person i do read a lot i would say leaders all leaders should be reading um small books big books whatever you can get your hands on read and stay relevant um mm -hmm. i've got a lot of books here in front of me and you guys can't see my office but i have rhinoceroses all in my office and one of the books that uh, I would suggest, besides the fact that I read books on, you know, John Maxwell, I've read, you know, books on Mel Robbins, Gary Keller's book, of course, right. uh, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, um, John Gordon, who's written the book, The Energy Bus. Uh, but Scott Alexander wrote a book called The Rhinoceros Success. This wow. is a short read and it's a, it's a, let's just say a fun fable. Some people struggle reading, so this is why I go, you get this book, and then this is gonna help you. Um, you. You gotta get out of your own way. That's probably one of the hardest things for people to do. And a rhinoceros is really a dumb animal, to be honest with you, they're stupid, okay? They do not, they do not have any amazing you know, wits about them as an animal, right? But one of the things that a rhinoceros does is they don't look back. They mm -hmm. only charge forward and they charge hard and they charge fast. They're aiming at exactly what they want wow. and they have thick skin. Yeah. Yes. And you yes. need to do that in this business. You thick need to skin. have I love it. thick skin. Um, you can't, you know, you can snort around and be fussing around about what you don't like and what you don't want to do. And you can stay in your pity party for however long you want to be but you have to get up and charge and go forward. And this is why I love rhinoceroses. Um, and there's so much opportunity out there, but you're, you're turning around all the time to look at what's behind you and what people are gonna say about you. Look, people talk about me all the time. I don't know what they're saying, but I don't think it really matters at this yeah, point. So what? So I'm gonna move forward whether you like it or not, because oh. it, what, you talking about me is not helping me anyway, and I don't know what you're saying. Doesn't matter. You're gonna talk even if I'm successful, you're gonna talk at me if I failed forward. Thick forward. skin, charge forward. So Rhinoceros Success by Scott Alexander. Get this book. It's a short, fun fable. Thank you for It'll sharing that. I love yeah, it, I wrote it down. That's a, a, a tough one. You know, really, to be quite candid, I'm a, I'm a 57 year old dude right now, right? I'm, I'm kind of getting old and, and uh you know setting my ways and and but really uh what inspires me the most i think these days are just some of these young kids that are in their 20s that are you know kicking butt and and, and taking names in the business world yeah. and um and so you know i'm just amazed i mean some of these some of these guys especially online with with online businesses that they've got and and uh i know that there's this thing that uh you know the the millennials just don't want to work and all of that but man i i see i'm just inspired so much by some of these kids these days I, the probably the most uh 
the most um, relevant one to me is uh, my own son. Uh, my son is uh, 21 years old. Um, and at the age of 16 or seven, 17 or so, he started dabbling in the music business. And um, uh, and he decided he was going to be a manager, not you know, not a, a talent because he he ain't got any talent that way. But he decided <laughs> he was going to be a, a manager in the music business. Wow! And um, now uh, I, I'll give you this: I'm no fan of the music. I am absolutely no fan of the music, uh, you know, that he and his artists are working with, but. But he's uh, 21 years old and um, uh, he's making more money than I ever made, uh, you know, at that age uh, because he's managing uh, uh, music artists and uh, going to New York. Fly. He just got back from Miami, going to New York, flying around. He was in Poland a few, few months wow. ago. Um, these kids these days are just doing incredible things. Yeah. Um, uh, and I get a lot of inspiration. I mean, I'm, I'm looking down at some of these kids and going, man, if they can do it, you know, I, I, I ought to be able to do it too. And, and so, yeah, the, nice. I get a lot of inspiration from that. If you're going to ask me about authors and books and stuff like that, uh, I'd have to say probably two of the, my, my most favorite authors right now, as far as business is concerned, are uh, Russell Brunson and Alex Hormozy. Um, Alex Hormozy is, is a guy that studied really kind of under, under Russell Brunson, but Russell Brunson is from uh, uh, a company called ClickFunnels that does um, a lot of uh, marketing and, mm -hmm. and uh, has a marketing tool and app out there. And the guy just has some great books, Expert Secrets, um, Dot Com Secrets, uh, Traffic Secrets. Just a lot of good stuff in, in those two, those books. But yeah, that's who I, I get a lot of in, inspiration from these young kids these days, I guess, because I'm getting so old, man. Hey, nothing better than able to say one of your inspirations is your son. That is freaking yeah. awesome, Rick. That, yeah. Yeah, that also you. tells a little something about the parenting, I dare say. So, <laughs> well, I mean, so many things. I, I did look at the podcast that, that were mashups, those last five. Excellent, excellent. In fact, um, I mean, the, some of the book recommendations that I've read, I need to reread the Atomic Habits, Jim, mm -hmm. Jim Collins. I just listened to some Zig Ziglar. Um, but I think really, if I had to name one thing that inspired me, it would be Brian Buffini. Yeah. Brian, if I, I love Brian Buffini. If I liked him anymore, it'd be inappropriate. I love <laughs> Brian Buffini. Out of the last 20 years, I've probably been to 16 of his conferences in San Diego. And every year I spend the money and I go down there. Nobody pays my way. And, and, and I think, is it going to be worth it this year? Is he going to blow me away? Every year. Every year, I just get blown away by this guy. His the guests he brings on, his message. He's got such integrity and such wholeness in his approach to life: spiritual, family, business, financial, personal. He just has it down. Um, I love Tom Ferry. Tom Ferry's got a very holistic view. Tom Ferry inspires the heck out of me. But if I had to choose one over the other, it would be. And I went to Tom Ferry this year. I went to Brian Buffini this year. Um, interestingly, Tom Ferry talked about you know he moved from the beach area in, in Southern California to Dallas or Houston. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Dallas. Or maybe yeah, Dallas. And so he's on the stage and he talks about, you know, when we moved to Dallas, he said, the building I live in, I'm the poorest guy in the building. He's got a lot of money mm -hmm. for him to be the poorest guy. He's surrounding himself with people that are more wealthy than he is. So he's taken those those the, those advice pieces that we've been given, hang around more successful people and you'd be more successful. Hang around wealthy people. He he's the poorest guy in his building. Wow. So I, I like Tom Fair a lot. I like Tony Robbins. In fact, if I give somebody a recommendation of a book, I would say um, get Tony Robbins' book called Life Force. Go to lifeforce.com. They'll, they'll charge you $9.99 for shipping. It is an amazing, amazing book. Um, the, the reviews on it are very polarized. Either people loved it to death or they hated it. It's, it's just a commercial for all the companies in, he's invested in. But it talks about medicine and, and the, the science of not just repairing us, not just replacing with a new part, but regenerating the, the regenerative idea of medicine. Mind-blowing book. And... Um, the, the very first quote of the book, the very first quote, a healthy man has a thousand wishes. A sick man has but one. Mm. And I just had an appendectomy two weeks ago. And that was, that was very um, telling to me, you know what, I just want to get better. So, um, but Tony Robbins, Tim Ferriss, you know, you guys have your five questions. If you haven't read any of Tim Ferriss's work, um, the four hour work week, um, you remember Mike West, Jan? 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, when my question and I were partners, he said the most impacting book he ever read in business was the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. And so I got the book and I read the book is good, but, um, tools of Titans and tribe of mentors, Tim Ferriss talks about questions. He asked these people and they're Uber performers. And the first question, he has 11 questions that he asked them. And the first question, what is the book or books you've given most as a gift and why, or what are one to three books that have greatly influenced your life? So he says, I start with that question because everybody has some favorite books and this tribe of mentors got 11 questions. It's, it's worth looking at. Okay. There you can see every time we have somebody, I like write down another thing. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Try sure. to mentor. I didn't even know he, uh, Tim did a new book. Cool. I'm writing it down. Um, you know, one of the exhibits, NAR had a very, very, very good booth. I mean, they were given coffee and, and refreshments and Boston cream clam chowder or whatever. I mean, they had a really impressive booth, but they had some educational sessions. And one of them was the librarians. And they talked for about 20 minutes about the NAR library and how you know, I, I have Hoopla and Libby on my phone. And so I download books that I can listen to in my car. Well, you can download the NAR library too. And they've got a ton of resources. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was interesting to me because I, I specifically picked that educational session to go to, to find out how to put the um, NAR library on my phone. You you can have What's that? I said, I didn't know they had that. That's cool. I didn't have it. Great yeah. cool. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, I try to find inspiration in, in nearly everything. I think that you, you, you get a little nugget of something in everything you do, every conversation, everything you read or listen to. But honestly, the biggest thing right now is my grandson. He's yeah. my grandson, Jameson. He's 18 months old and the kid is fearless. And he has this determination and this focus that is incredible to watch. And he's just like every other toddler. Okay. He's, he's, he's special to me, but he's not any, you know, we're all human. And so there's this book I read called the mountain, the mountain is you. And when you think about it, it's very symbolic, you know, Oh, you made a mountain out of mo a molehill. You made something bigger or, Oh, how am I ever going to climb that mountain? I'm looking at, you know, I'm at the base of it. And I know Matt, you like to climb. So yep. you're at the base of it and you're looking up at the mountain. You're like, I can never do that. Well, the mountain is you. And in that book, I, I forget the author, but in the book, she talks about the brain, the chemistry of the brain and how infants and toddlers are not conditioned to give up. Yeah. They are conditioned to keep mm. going. Mm. When you learn how to roll over, when they learn how to crawl, when they learn how to walk, they don't try it once and say, well, that didn't work. So I'm giving up. And yet we become conditioned over time to have that. And so, you know, I think back when I was, when I was a kid and I was in Girl Scouts, I was fearless going out selling those Girl Scout cookies because I wanted all the prizes. Wow. Well, the, biggest, the biggest prize today, if I go out door knocking is a listing and mm. the commission that comes from that yet, I am terrified of door knocking. I hate it. So I don't do it. So I think looking at, at the fact that we can't, we can't, um, I don't want to to tell my grandson don't do something because I don't want to break that fearlessness and that determination and that focus. But yet over time, he's going to learn that hopefully not from me. His parents are amazing. They're out there. Go play in the backyard. I told his dad it's time to build the um, American Ninja Warrior obstacle. <laughs> yeah. now, because that kid is going to be that kid. So um, I, I think that just finding that inspiration from watching how how little kids are is wow. really kind of the coolest thing I've been experiencing lately. That's awesome. No, no answer. So, so that. Add to that before I go to the next question, I have a, a really good friend who, um, in the last couple of years, just keeps telling me this word every now and then, randomly, and that word is perspective. And so when I start feeling down or frustrated, I think of perspective and how can I how can I change my perspective on this situation. This mm -hmm. obstacle is not a mountain forever. It's a, maybe a mountain today, but it's not a mountain forever. So changing your perspective too, I think yeah. is important. I think the biggest, the biggest thing for me, honestly, was just kind of uh, my faith journey through all this, you know, um, starting out the way I started out uh, was, was really, really tough. And it, it really led me to question a lot of things like, is, is this what life is about? You know, divorced at 22 with two kids, uh, working two jobs at 1.3 jobs, um, life sucks. And then I realized 
You know, I, I did that to myself. You know, that was no one's fault but mine. And uh, and so uh, just kind of as I grew in that capacity and, and when, when we went through our financial journey, um, just in a nutshell, we at the beginning of this disaster, we found ourselves um, $750,000 negative net worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I thought I will never, ever, ever work my way out of this. And I screwed up my family, my family tree forever. And uh, I'm hoping that I can, you know, my wife and I can work through this without completely screwing up our kids and in their future. And uh, we really just dove head head first, you know, into this. And, and we just trusted, you know, trusted God and, you know, honored him and the way that we lived our lives and the way that we ran the way that I ran my business. And we were, you know, spent less than we made and invested and did all that. And, you know, sitting here today telling you that we're 100 percent debt free, that my kids don't have student loan debt, that if my wife wanted to retire tomorrow, she could um, is is phenomenal place to be. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I can take any, uh, any credit for any of it. And, um, and so I, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, stay out of debt, um, live on less than you make. And, uh, you know, that's a good way to go. Um, so my kids know if they ever borrow money, I'm going to kill them. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, they lived it, uh, you know, so they see it now from That's this right. side and, uh, and they knew, you know, I don't think my kids had a birthday party until they were, you know, 10, 11 years old. You know, we just didn't, we just know we're not doing that. You know, um, we got some crazy stories that might be book number two is, uh, is kind of, um, that story of our lives, but you know, my, my faith, uh, you know, God is good. And, uh, we, we, I do everything in my business to, to make sure that I'm, I'm giving credit where credit is due and it's not me. Well, it certainly has gotten you where you are today, which is absolutely incredible and fantastic. And to go the, the 750, uh, 750 to being out uh, is a pretty good story, Alex. So there you are. The blue sky outside. Oh, I, like it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, be, you know, waking up every morning and being able to um, create your own destiny. Right. Uh, but no, I, I, you know, inspiration, you know, my family inspires me. Right. So, and I, and I love the question because it really comes down to your why, you know, really what inspires you, what, what's your driver. And for me, it's, you know, family, family first. So that's a, a big inspiration um, for me. I think, uh, you know, I love, uh, you know, books, podcasts, videos, um, Jim Rohn is a, uh, he's a good inspiration for me. I love Jim Rohn, a little mm-hmm. more old school, but more, more, uh, de- you know, personal developments, um, is, is something as well. Uh, Matthew McConaughey is pretty inspiring. He's um, got a new book out, right? He has a book out and I've uh, been reading that pretty, pretty good. Just very, uh, out, uh, upfront now, um, transparent individual as well. But yeah, as far as inspiring the opportunity to grow this team to whatever level I can is really inspiring. I will tell you that every day. So I tell people when I w- woke up, when I was a real new agent, I woke up and I'd ask myself, where am I going to find a buyer or seller today? Right now I wake up and I say, how can I make this team, this business, the best place for an agent to be, right? How can I make this the best it could be? It is inspiring. So it's funny. The success of agents in- inspires me. Awesome. Seeing the agents that I work with going from newbies or from people that didn't succeed and then come to our company and I see them getting transactions and I see them being successful and going on vacation, someone else's success inspires me to keep going and sharing my knowledge because I love that they could become successful. A lot of people in real estate were in prior jobs they were not happy in. And to see them succeed and become happy in this business, it's like I'm selling and collecting the commission myself, which I'm not. But I feel that when they have success, I'm so inspired by them to see that what you do and how you teach could make someone have a really successful, happy life. That inspires the hell out of me. 
<laughs> that's a unique answer. I love that one. No, that is the first. Hey, listen, we talk about, you know, just leadership in general, and that's level five leadership stuff right there, right? Because mm -hmm. you are training people up and, and, and not for your own accolades, right? But no. because you want to watch them succeed, that that was fantastic, and that's the first time we have heard that. So, well, that was another inspiring episode. I love that there was a lot of talk about family uh, in those those answers. Good book recommendations as well. So you can catch all of those show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. This was episode two hundred ninety three. We'll have the bios and all of our guests, as well as uh, links to all of their social media, their websites, their information, and how you can uh, dive in and get more information on them uh, over there at the podcast show notes, wbnlpodcast.com. If you want more uh, Align, Connect, and Prosper uh, resources, go over to our website, wbnlcoaching.com, click the more button on our drop-down menu and go to WBNL resources and you'll find a plethora of more stuff there for you to dive in and, uh, and look at. We have some special guests coming up over the next couple of weeks. We're only, gosh, a little over a month away from our 300th episode of the podcast. We're really excited about that. And Jan and I have some special things uh, lined up for that episode. We're going to do a little wandering episode. Uh, she's going to be out here in California and we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to do it live together, not live um, online live, but uh, uh, good stuff is going to be happening. We always have a good time when we get out there and do podcasts together. Anyway, enough of all that. Once again, show notes, wbnlpodcast.com. This was episode 293. And until we see you again next week, align, connect and prosper. <laughs>